So the popularity um, all over the world uh, on a method called the Geo New Zealand style clink and dink, call it what you will. Um, but it's a way of, usually it's a dry fly suspending a nymph. Now obviously you're kind of limited on the size of nymphs you use depending on the dry fly. So I've always been looking for something that's got a little bit more meat to the bones. Something that can hold up a, a decent sized nymph because some of the water I'm fishing is quite fast and I need to get my nymph down so I need quite a big um, indicator. But I like my indicator to be a fly and I like it to be able to catch fish. And once you start going to the bigger sizes, so the bigger bungs to hold up big nymphs, the flies look nothing like a, a, a proper fly if that makes sense. Your actual, your pattern looks nothing like it. So this one, it's an amazing... Um, dry fly but it's an amazing indicator but it will catch fish and what happens is when it's when it's sort of ride along the water like so and then when the weight of the fly kicks in the nymph it'll tip and it acts as the perfect indicator so it's kind of two flies in one um but just an amazingly good pattern so let's go ahead and tie it so the first thing i do is i get a SLDD2, SLD2 partridge hook, um, right up there, probably my, it's my favourite dry fly hook by a country mile, and it's a size 10 so I can get a lot on there, so if we catch them in the device, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use orange thread because for some reason on the fly it works as an attractor as well, I do like orange in my dry fly, so just come down Give yourself a really good bed of tying thread because we've got a lot to catch in here. In with your scissors and trim that off. It's a really quick tie but one that works so so well. I've then got this tiny um, foam cord from Rutland Taco for years ago. And it's only about 2.5mm something like that. And I've got one of these bits of cord here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in my lighter, singe the end, just to round it off a touch. And just with your thumb and forefinger. So you've got a nice rounded end like that. And then we want this quite big because it's got to cock. And just get that tied in nice and tight. running all the way down the thread. It's pretty robust foam, so it's not going anywhere. In with your scissors. Snip that off. Come right, so I've given myself a little bit of space. I can work down right down to the eye. Right down, so you've covered all that thread. Like so, okay. I've then got this stuff, super buoyant. And a long time ago, we kind of run out of aero dry wing. So I was looking for some, a substitute. And this is fish on grey done. I'm loving this stuff and I tie a lot of flies with it. So it's super, super buoyant. And it comes just a little car. You didn't get much, but you didn't need a lot. And it's got a little um, card there. So what I do is I'm going to cut four lengths. I'll show you in a second. One of the problems is when it comes off this small card, it keeps its kink. So you end up with bits like this, but. So I've got four. Let's try and straighten this out a bit. So I've got one, two, three, four. God, this stuff. I've got four, the four lengths here. Nice and simple. And all you're going to do is, let me just get these straightened a little bit, is we're going to put them on the hook shank as close to the eye as we dare. So on your side, on the top, Yeah, that's on the bottom, sorry. On the top. So I've got two, 
lengths, distinct lengths. And then on my side here, same again, one at the bottom. Just get it all where you need it to be. It's a bit faffy, but it's worth it. The one at the bottom. And then finally one at the top. So you've basically got four lengths. Two on your side of the hook shank, one at the top, one at the bottom of the hook, and two at mines. Okay. So we then come in and tidy all this up. You want to get rid of as much as that as possible. So just come in with your scissors and just work your way around the fly. careful not to get any of the front lengths any stray bits just tidy them up I did suppose it'll matter to the fish but aesthetically it matters to us as an angler so you've got all that there on the hook shank we then got to come down to a bit where the body goes thin again okay well, this looks messy just now, but trust me, you didn't panic. Stick in a whip finish. So it keeps everything in place. And I have to watch what I'm doing next. I don't know what pal this at the camera shop. But basically, we brush all these fibres out. Um, Velcro. Always the best. And just brush everything out. So basically, you've got a hollow cone coming out over the front of the hook shank like so. And then we've got to start to work the fibres back. Again, if you can, we're looking for top and bottom, either side, and secure. Top and bottom, either side, keeping all the fibres away, and secure. And now for the bottom. Probably got too much on one side there. You just work it all the way for the eye. What you didn't want is stray fibres. And then this one. Just get it under control by you can actually spin two seconds. Just make sure everything's um, back for the eye there. I'll show you that the eye's visible, you just kind of see it because of the bulk. So stroke all the fibres back and then create this perfect little collar. Like so. And then we come in, whip finish. And the last bit's to bring all the fibres back forward and we've got to cut them in a straight line so that we've got an even body. So pull all those fibres to the front, a little bit fiddly. Once you've tied a couple of these they're actually quite easy but because you're trying to tie it for the camera and you're not trying to move everything it's a little bit trickier. So I just want to come in in a straight line here so I've got the body it'll come right to the end of the hook when I cut this. You'll see. It's a little bit too long. It's always better being long and then shortening it. Tiny little bit more. It's better. And there you've got. Your indicator fly. 
but the perfect size, um, an unbelievably good buoyancy. I says I would show you the eye there. Let's take this out. You can see the eye. It's not covered. It's just the way the ankle was. Um, but yeah, you've got the perfect. You got the perfect indicator and dry fly, so it will catch fish. And you can, like I say with this, you can keep dropping it back and dropping it back, make it as short as you dare. Um, but the more foam that's on there, the more treatment you can give the fly. And obviously the more treatment you can give the fly, when I say treatment, I mean floatant. And if you can get as much floating on as there, obviously it's going to be even more buoyant. Just a, a, a really effective fly, um, but its main purpose is an indicator and what an indicator that is that'll hold up plenty of tungsten i hope you enjoyed that um if you did enjoy it there's plenty of other fly patterns on my channel give them a wee look and a like please subscribe